Good morning to the early service. You know, it's really 9.30, but we just pretend it's 10.30. A uh, number of things, but uh, first and foremost, the world's smallest insert for lilies and plants. And Lois, when is this due back? In a couple weeks. In a couple weeks. So. Today? Yeah, today is good, right? So uh, I noticed some have left that in the offering plate, so that's fine. Anyway. Uh, uh, we're in March, it's March 10th, and guess what, the end of the month, March 31st, Easter, so just a couple weeks to go. Uh, and that, of course, is in your bulletin also. Uh, and then family night, we still have lots of fun, we have good food, we have bells and Bible study at 6, and then our Lenten midweek service and golly, we're already Lent 5 next Wednesday. Yeah, the fifth uh, midweek. So Easter's coming quickly. Uh, and of course, handbell also uh, at 6 uh, on Wednesdays. Last week, as you know, well know, uh, we had the chili cook-off. And Ron, who was a prophet last week, two weeks ago, one, we won't say that there was any shenanigans there, that his wife counted the votes, but... No, she did not. Oh, you didn't count the votes? No, I did not. <laughs> Somebody else did. <laughs> okay. So our congratulations, of course, to uh, Tommy Jackson and to Kathy and to Ron. Uh, one, two, three, I mean, and and... I voted for two out of three, so I felt good about that. Anyway, uh, also, there's still boxes out here. They're collecting goods for LWML and going through that. So let's open this service with 701. Please rise for this, the fourth Sunday in Lent. We make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say, we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Oh. 
Most merciful God, this Lenten season, your people declare their sins before you. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this day to confess to you that we have acted against you and against our family, friends, and others. We have not placed you first in our lives, nor have we listened to your holy counsel. We have failed to love you as our God and as our Creator. We have failed to follow your commandments, and in doing so, we have sinned against you and against those whose lives we share. Yet, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Dear saints, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Therefore, go forth in his name and sin no more. Amen. Amen. The intro for this morning, selected verses from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me higher upon the rock. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? We respond with the hymn of Lent. be with you. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Almighty God, our gracious and heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. And though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Now grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with the hearing of God's word. Our O 
Old Testament reading this uh, third sun, uh, fourth Sunday in Lent. Sorry, uh, my page flipped on me. Um, is in Numbers. Okay, is this better? Okay. Um, <clears throat> the fourth Sunday in Lent, our reading is in Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Or, they were sent by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way, and the people spoke against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There are no food, no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prays for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten when he sees it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole, and if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading this morning is in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. The apostle Paul writes, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you one walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of power of the air. The spirit is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom... We all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Our Holy Gospel reading this morning is found in the book of John, chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whatever or whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God, and this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and the people loved the darkness rather than the light, because of their deeds were evil. For everyone who does wicked thing hates the light 
and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been carried out in God. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our Christian faith this morning using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Our sermon hymn is number 421. Jesus grant that balm and healing.
Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this blessed Lenten day. Amen. Wow, as a Lutheran church, you can't ask more than Ephesians 2 and John 3, right? I mean, we've all memorized these verses, but for all the times we've memorized John 3.16 and maybe said it a hundred times or more, do we remember the two verses before it? You know, they, they put that in. You know, it could have started at 316. For God so loved the world. We know that. I take a little issue with the ESV because they changed it to only from only begotten, which I disagree with, but that's another day. But Ephesians 2.8. I mean, you're saved by faith by grace alone. Can't get much more Lutheran than that. But before Paul wrote to the Ephesians, before Jesus preached and was recorded in John, God worked upon the people of Israel, the Hebrews, way back in Numbers 21. And Numbers, I know, is like one of your favorite books, right? You've spent days and years studying Numbers and and I know it was like, Numbers, okay, yeah, Genesis, Exodus, yep, it's there, the Pentateuch. And the English name for Numbers, by the way, comes from the Septuagint, that's the Greek translation of the Old Testament, because of the census list that's in it. And the Hebrew title makes more sense, Mit Barim, in the desert. And it's more descriptive of its contents. For Numbers is the account of the 38-year period of Israel's wandering in the desert. Today's text is near the end of their 40-year journey. The text depicts one rendition of a scene repeated, unfortunately, again and again by God's beloved people. We see Israel, even as God leaves them now to begin the final approach to the promised land, relentlessly whine and complain. By doing this, dear friends, they show their ingratitude toward God and His gracious provision of substance on their journey, even though, even through the lengthy wanderings in the desert wilderness. And indeed, although they only deserve God's punishment, God is determined to show them mercy. So, hopefully after all these years, you long know that I have an affinity for snakes. And I'll, and I'll share a story that led me to that affinity years and years ago. As a young child of about five, I'm uh, out running around in the pasture in my grandma and grandpa McMullen's farm. And, and I hear this squealing. And it's like, for those of you who have been raised in the country or raised on a farm... It's a baby rabbit. It's a baby rabbit. And of course, what, you're five years old? You think, oh, that's a baby rabbit. And then all of a sudden, the baby rabbit doesn't make any more. You know, it's high. It's like when you're five years old, it's almost up to your shoulders high grass, but maybe waist high. So I'm following the, sign, the sound, and then there's no sound. Well, that's, how am I going to find and I go over, and a big black snake had captured the little baby rabbit and had eaten him. Now, if you know anything about, if you watched it on TV probably, you've never seen that. You know, they swallow it whole. And so, because I walked up on it, it coiled, and being a five-year-old and being fairly smart about snakes, I didn't touch the ground. Whew. I'm gone. I'm gone. You know, forget that. And there's other other episodes at Grandma and Grandpa's little farm that, uh, uh, you know, that was a black snake, so it would have bitten you if it would have bitten me. It, you know, it wouldn't have killed me. probably hurt like the Dickens. But they also had copperheads. Now, 
rattlesnakes? No, I didn't have that. And, and my mom and dad's farm on the other side of the county, not really, you know, poisonous snakes and certainly no rattlesnakes. But that set the tone for my lifelong disdain for snakes. So this, this reading today, you know, yeah. And by the way, it's on the, your cover. And I looked at that and I'm like, wait a minute, those are cobras, right? They're cobras on your bulletin cover. And they had, cobra, they had cobras over there? You know, I'm thinking just India. And, but was I wrong? You know, we do what we all do today. I pull up my phone, Google cobras on the, in the Sinai. And yep, there they were. This, by the way, is basically an Egyptian cobra. And so God didn't call them, you know, God didn't give animals their names. Adam did that. But anyway, the people are impatient. You know, got to understand the text here. Now, they had lost a battle way back in Numbers 14, and so that sort of hurt their pride, and, you know, and, and why did they lose that battle? Because, well, God said, no, don't go do this, and they said, oh, no, we're, we're mighty, we'll go do this, and they lost the battle back in Numbers 14. But just before this, in Numbers 20, they were all huffed up, you know, They'd won a battle. Hey, we'd won a battle. But now Edom was a very strong country, very strong nation. And God told Moses, tell the people, no, don't go into Edom. Which is why in our text, they bypassed it. But in order to bypass it, they had to go back south. And okay, we'll give them credit for being directional out even in the wilderness. Wait a minute, didn't we just come from here? What, what's going on here? And so what do they do? They complain to Moses and they complain to God. Why have you brought us up out of here? Oh, woe is us to die in the wilderness. They've been out there almost 40 years. You know the bread and the food they're talking about, right? The manna. God fed them with manna. Food from heaven. Remember, Moses struck the rock and they got water, so that's baloney. Food and water, but okay, I get it. It'd be like maybe eating porridge every day for 40 years. I don't know. There's no bread and there's no water in verse 5. Then verse 6, we loathe, that's your English translation, this worthless food Literally in the Hebrew, it's an abomination that makes one sick to the stomach. In other words, we're going to puke. You know, they're unhappy. They're unhappy with Moses. They're unhappy with God. Time and time. How many times? You know, this is the same bunch we talked about just a couple weeks ago. You know, they walk across dry ground on, in the Red Sea. And now Moses is up at Sinai getting the Ten Commandments. And they're like, oh, he's taking too long. Wait a minute, you're the people that just walked across dry ground on the Red Sea, and now you're wondering if there's one true God? Really? So, what was their, their, their punishment for that? God said, 40 years in the wilderness. Why the 40 years? Lifespan was in the 30s, so it's generational. This generation was unfaithful. They'll all be gone, and most of them were. So verse 6, The Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. And of course, they've got that covered pretty good on the cover here. You know, and then... It's one of those dull moments for the people of Israel, for the Hebrews. Let's see. We disobeyed God for the upteenth time. God said, okay, I'll get your attention. And now I'll send snakes, poisonous snakes, to kill you. And then they figured that out. We'll give them credit for that. They figured that out fairly quickly, according to the text. 
Moses, Moses, save us. Save us from the snakes that we know God sent because we were unfaithful, we complained. But they repented in verse 7. We have sinned for we have spoken against who? Against the Lord and against you. We Remember we just had confession in the beginning? We always say that. We always say, you know, we've sinned against our neighbors, our friends, our family. But we've also sinned when we do that against God. And so... What happens when we get impatient with God? And heaven's knows, as Mary will tell you, I, you know, the, the fruits of the Spirit, and your patience is there. Lord, you did not give me that one. I'm impatient. Especially on Sunday morning, especially on daylight savings time, when I came to church this morning, every light's red. Every light. And not a car in sight. But my light's red. So I'm like, okay, Lord, I know you're teaching me patience. But what happens when we get impatient with God? God, you didn't do this. You didn't heal somebody fast enough. Or you didn't do this fast enough. And so we can be like the Hebrews. And of course, the title of the sermon, A Poisonous World, we don't have to have a bunch of poisonous snakes. There's poisons in the world. Poisons of evil and sin and of Satan. If we had to look right now as a country, fentanyl, right? What is it? Two over two grams can kill you. Do you know? You know, two grams is minuscule. You know, most of us who are older take some sort of medication. You may take twenty milligrams or whatever. Can you imagine a substance that's two milligrams, like fentanyl? And I'm like, why are they mixing it with these other drugs? Well, no, this isn't pure cocaine. It's cocaine with a little fentanyl in it. Yeah, and then they snort the cocaine and it kills them. Hundreds of our fellow citizens here in Oklahoma have died. I don't know. I don't know. There's plenty of poisons in the world. And, of course, the poisons of sin and evil the people that attack us as conservative Christians, they're out there. They've always been there, generation after generation. It's just what kind of persecution. Fortunately, we haven't reached a point in America where, as we gather at Emmanuel Lutheran Church, the law comes in and says, you can't do that. And we pray none of us, including the youngest ones, will ever, ever see that. But who knows? Who knows? But what God did? What did God do here? They complained, and, and again, this is not the first time. This is towards the end of the wilderness journey, and God's saving them from Edom because Edom had a powerful army. Go around them and go over here to get to the promised land, the land that I promised you. And so they're doing. Moses is leading them, doing what God told him to do. But the Lord forgave their sin. And so, now what's he tell Moses? You know, from 21st century, Christians like, what? Build a staff, and then, you know, it's again, nice rendition here on the, on the cover. The bronze snake. And you know, wait a minute. You know, I was actually asked this last week, I think it was, about, you know, is crosses a graven image? No. It's like the bronze snake here has nothing to do with the healing. It had everything to do with believing God and his promises. Look upon the bronze snake and you will live. That's why Jesus quotes this here back in John. Just as they looked upon that snake and were relieved of their sin and saved from the poison of the bite, so also, so also we look to the cross, we look to Christ, what? To relieve us from the poison of sin and death and condemnation. The Lord delivered the Israelites, look up and live. 
And of course, why is Jesus telling that? Because the Lord delivers his people again through his son. The power again, as I said, wasn't in the bronze snake. It's not in the cross here or the cross I wear. The power is not there. It's the power behind the cross. The Jesus Christ, God's Son, died upon it. And that's our remembrance. You know, when we have communion, as we will next week, what's Jesus say? Do this in remembrance of me. That's why we wear the cross, to show we are Christian. Watched a Japanese series the other day, and and now I've got to check the history of this thing because you never know when it's Hollywood. But Portuguese, according to this series, Portuguese Catholics were in Japan. Not a lot of them, but a couple. And there was converts. This one Englishman whose ship had run aground. He runs across this Japanese guy and he's wearing a cross. Well, really? Okay. And so, again, the power of the cross is not the symbol, it's the, what the symbol stands for, Jesus Christ. That's why I wear this cross with the crucifix with Jesus on it. You know, they say, well, no, Jesus is not on the cross, so you shouldn't have a crucifix. Eh, whatever. But look to the cross. Look to Jesus and be saved. The bronze snake reminded the wandering Israelites of the profound depth of their depravity but also of God's love and mercy. And the cross is there to do the same for us. We need to have the cross in our midst, for it reminds us that through the cross, the instrument of crucifixion and execution, our Savior lived out his undying love for us and for our salvation. Dear friends, our sins were carried to the cross by Jesus and buried with him in the grave. And his resurrection victory assures us of eternal destiny as God's children. And so this day and every day, look up to the cross and live. Amen. Now may that peace of God, which does transcend all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus this day and every day. Amen. We rise for the offertory on page four. Let us pray. Lord God of our salvation, we pray this day for the Oklahoma District, for President David Neeritz, and for all our congregations, pastors, teachers, and commission ministers, <clears throat> that we will continue to share the good news of the gospel, of sins forgiven, and life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for the people of the Ukraine who are fighting for their lives and for their country. We pray that you will continue to grant protection and comfort to all the people, but especially to the women and children who are trapped in this war. We also pray for the people of Russia, that you would deliver them from the evil of their current leadership. And finally, we pray for all those who have lost loved ones in this war that you will grant them your peace and your comfort. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we also continue to pray for the people of Israel and Gaza. 
We pray that you will grant protection and comfort to all the people, but especially to the women and children in this war. We pray for your peace that can only come through faith in you. Pour out your spirit upon all those within these lands that they may truly know your peace and your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, you know the hearts and the minds of all. You know those who are sick and those who are shut in and those who stand in need of your care and comfort. But we continue to pray for Lon Keister, for Betty Mahan, for Bill Mahan, for Leonard Mahan, for Lyle Diekman, for Luke Stockstill, for Laura Poole, for Karen Rumsey, for Brandon Schroeder, for Ernesto Zambrano, for Pastor Frank Martin, for baby Robin Crouch, for Lori Steele, for Carol Hemphill, for Tracy Lee Latour, for Jorge Lopez, for Damon Smith, for Maya McCright, for Rick Hedrick, for Sandy Osmus, for Janine Bryant, and for Susan Bellis. We pray your Spirit's comfort to be upon each of them, O Lord, that you would guard and protect them in the days and weeks ahead, and that if it be thy will, you would grant healing to the sick and comfort to the afflicted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, as we pray the prayer he taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, dear friends in Christ, as you go forth this Lenten time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord always look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Please be seated. We close with 431, not all the blood of beasts.
Lois has an announcement. Ron has an announcement. I'll go first because I know Lois has got a very important announcement, so I just want to kind of get you prepared for it. The uh, Wednesday night, of course, we're still having the meal. This Wednesday, we're having ham, so if you want to have a nice dinner this Wednesday, come for that and then come for the worship as well. Uh, by the way, winning is not the greatest of things because I found out there's a burden to this. <laughs> I have to take care of that crystal trophy and dust it and everything. So, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, my dear, belovedly wife will dust it. <laughs> Anyway, uh, and then in three weeks we have Easter and the uh, Resurrection Sunday breakfast. So uh, make sure you plan to come to that. Uh, we do different charities over the years for it and in different organizations. And this time uh, we've decided, uh, I decided, uh, <laughs> to uh, have the proceeds go to our Lutheran Women's Missionary League. They do a lot for the congregation, so... This year, the LDML is going to be the beneficiary of our breakfast. So come and generously donate for that organization, but also come and celebrate the Resurrection Sunday with us with a nice, hearty breakfast and good fellowship time. Mrs. Hewlings, you're on. And by the way, on that Sunday, we do have sunrise, but it's a little after sunrise at 7.30. Okay, very quickly. We were called to see if anyone is interested in going to a, a an Oklahoma City baseball game. You know, you can get a group price for tickets and so on. Is anyone interested in doing that? Good. Oh, I mean, sorry. <laughs> that just came They're out. They're rushing forward. No, I, if somebody really thinks it'd be great talk to me, and then you can manage it and get it all taken care of. Um, Kathy Kastner has worked very hard at cleaning our nursery, going through everything and getting rid of broken things and things that are little bitty that kids might swallow and all kinds of things like that. And she even put a new rug in the nursery, so it's looking better all the time. And she said that she's going to come on Saturday between 1 and 3, and if anybody wants to join her to do some cleaning of the toys that she kept, the items, she would appreciate your help. And um, Kathy, are you going to be down in the room now if anybody wants to go in there, or is it self-explanatory if they go down? Yeah, they went a few weeks ago. Okay. They're... Third door down the hall towards the Shalom room, the third door on the right. She has put a lot of things she's not keeping in the nursery. If anybody wants to look at them, knows some place that could use them, you want them for your grandkids, your own kids, whatever. We're going to get rid of them. So you're, you have first um, right of refusal. And... That is it. And I'm going to put another basket out for the flower things so they don't get mixed up with the offering because that's not how it should be. And Ron's um, monies go to our LWML, Emmanuel's LWML, not the national, to help us that we could do some projects and so on. It's like for our general fund to help um, finance some things that we might be able to do. So it's not national this time. And two late updates on your prayer list. Uh, I just was informed before service that Robin Crouch, the baby Robin, passed his spinal exam, correct? That's what the technical term. And he's good to go. So that was, that's why he was on there. So we're glad for that. Susan Bellis at the end of your prayer list is Pastor Mark Monchow's sister. She was in a horrible car wreck in Colorado. Uh, they just barely saved her. That's how bad the wreck was. Uh, and I think, and I don't know if Brad knows, but I think she's maybe at uh, Boulder at the University of Colorado. Do you know where she? Okay. So uh, she's had 
lots of setbacks, and so it's still touch and go for her. So keep her, uh, obviously, in your prayers as you will. Have a blessed day, and welcome to Daylight Savings Time. We fool God with that, by the way. It's time for church. Yeah. <laughs>